Johann Lorenz Hagenauer, a Salzburg merchant, was Leopold Mozart's landlord, banker, and correspondent. The Mozart family occupied the third floor of his house. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg. Linz, October 3, 1762. You have been thinking, haven't you, that we are already in Vienna, but we are still in Linz. Tomorrow, God willing, we shall go on to Vienna by the so-called ordinary boat. Indeed, we should certainly have been there already, had we not been obliged against our will to spend five whole days in Passau. This delay, for which his grace the Bishop of Passau was responsible, has made me lose eighty gulden, which I should have made here if I had arrived sooner, whereas I must now content myself with forty-odd gulden, which remain from the concert we gave the day before yesterday. But what really took place in Passau I must postpone to a personal conversation, as it would be too lengthy to relate here. Suffice it to say that Wolfgang, but not my little girl, had the privilege of performing before his grace, and that for this he received one whole ducat, i.e. exactly four golden. But do not tell that to anybody. Meanwhile, we pray that our archbishop may live long. More when we meet. Now let me describe our journey a little. The 20th of last month, we arrived at Passau at 5 o'clock in the evening and left next morning with the canon, Count Herberstein, reaching Linz in the evening of the same day. We are living with people called Kiner and are very well looked after. They are two spinsters who, since the death of their parents, have taken charge of the house and who are so fond of my children that they do everything they possibly can for us. I should add that my children, the boy especially, fill everyone with amazement. Count Herberstein has gone on to Vienna and will spread in advance a sensational report about them. And yesterday, Count von Schlick, Captain General of this district, left with his wife for Vienna. Both were uncommonly gracious to us. They said that, as soon as we should reach Vienna, we must go to see them. Meanwhile, they would speak to Count Durazzo and make our arrival generally known there. To judge by appearances, everything ought to go well. May God keep us well and strong as hitherto. So far, we are still in good health, although I occasionally feel here and there some little twinges of gout. The children are merry and behave everywhere as if they were at home. The boy is an intimate with everyone, especially with the officers, as if he had known them all his life. I enclose my draft for this month. Please get it cashed. The tax on it will have to be paid. Take your rent out of it. I should like your wife, to whom especially we send most obedient greetings, to arrange for four masses to be said on our behalf at Maria Plain, and that as soon as possible. My little girl sends greetings, and would like your dear wife to know that she kept her promise at Maria F in Passau. Yes, we all prayed for Herr Lorenz. Otherwise, you are all well, I hope. That is our heart's wish. We shall soon write to you from Vienna. Perhaps before we get there, we shall have some news to send. So far, there is none. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg. Vienna, October 16, 1762. On the feast of St. Francis, we left Linz at half past four in the afternoon by the so-called ordinary boat and reached Mauthausen after nightfall on the same day at half past seven. At noon on the following day, Tuesday, we arrived at Ebes, where two minorities and a Benedictine who were with us on the boat read masses during which our Wolfgang strummed on the organ and played so well that the Franciscans, who happened to be entertaining some guests at their midday meal, left the table and with their company rushed to the choir and were almost struck dead with amazement. 
In the evening we reached Stein, and on Wednesday at three in the afternoon arrived at Vienna, and took our midday and evening meals together at five o'clock. On the journey we had continual rain and a lot of wind. Wolfgang had already caught a cold in Linz, but in spite of our irregular life, early rising, eating and drinking at all hours, and wind and rain, he has, thank God, kept well. When we landed, Gilowski's servant, who was already there, came on board and brought us to our lodgings. But after leaving our luggage safely and tidily there, we soon hurried off to an inn to appease our hunger. Galowski himself then came to welcome us. Now we have already been here five days and do not yet know where the sun rises in Vienna, for to this very hour it has done nothing but rain and, with constant wind, has snowed a little now and then, so that we have even seen some snow on the roofs. Moreover, it has been, and still is, very frosty, though not exceedingly cold. One thing I must make a point of telling you, which is, that we quickly got through the local customs and were let off the chief customs altogether, and for this we have to thank our master Wolfgang, for he made friends at once with the customs officer, showed him his clavier, invited him to visit us, and played him a minuet and his little fiddle. Thus we got through. The customs officer asked most politely to be allowed to visit us, and for this purpose made a note of our lodgings. So far, in spite of the most atrocious weather, we have been to a concert given by Count Calato. Further, Countess Zinzendorf introduced us to Count Wilzek, and on the 11th to His Excellency, the Imperial Vice-Chancellor, Count Colorado where we were privileged to see and to speak to the leading ministers and ladies of the imperial court, to wit, the Hungarian Chancellor, Count Palfi, and the Bohemian Chancellor, Count Chotek, as well as Bishop Esterhazy, and a number of persons, all of whom I could not note. All the ladies, especially, were very gracious to us. Count Leopold Kuhnberg's fiancé spoke to my wife of her own accord and told her that she is going to be married at Salzburg. She is a pretty, friendly woman of medium height. She is expecting her betrothed in Vienna very shortly. Countess Zinzendorf is using her influence on our behalf, and all the ladies are in love with my boy. We are already being talked of everywhere, and when, on the 10th, I was alone at the opera, I heard the Archduke Leopold, from his box, say a number of things to another box, namely that there was a boy in Vienna who played the clavier most excellently, and so on. At eleven o'clock that very same evening I received a command to go to Schoenbrunn on the twelfth, but the following day there came a fresh command to go there on the thirteenth instead the twelfth being the feast of Maximilian, and therefore a very busy gala day. As, I gather, they want to hear the children in comfort. Everyone is amazed, especially at the boy, and everyone whom I have heard says that his genius is incomprehensible. Baron Schell is using his influence on my behalf and is gratefully acknowledging the kindness he enjoyed in Salzburg. If you have an opportunity, please tell this to Herr Kiosilus, with my respects. Count Dewan also has given me a note for Baron Schell, and has filled me with hopes that I shall leave Vienna fully satisfied. And so it seems, since the court is asking to hear us before we have announced ourselves, for young Count Palfi happened to be passing through Linz as our concert was about to begin. He was cowling on Countess Schlick, who told him about the boy and persuaded him to stop the mail coach in front of the town hall and attend the concert with her. He listened with astonishment and spoke later with great excitement 
of the performance to the Archduke Joseph, who passed it on to the Empress. Thus, as soon as it was known that we were in Vienna, the command came for us to go to court. That, you see, is how it happened. I wrote the above on the 11th, fully intending to tell you on the 12th, after our return from Schoenberg, how everything had gone off, but we had to drive straight to Prince von Hildbergenhausen and six ducats were more important to us than the dispatch of my letter. I have sufficient confidence in Frau Hagenauer and trust enough to her kind friendship to know that she will accept even now our congratulations on her name day and even in the short form of merely saying that we shall ask God to keep her and all our loved ones well and strong for many years to come and to invite us all in due course to play cards in heaven. Now all that I have time for is to say, in great haste, that their majesties received us with such extraordinary graciousness that when I shall tell of it, people will declare that I have made it up. Suffice it to say that Wolfgang jumped up on the empress's lap, put his arms round her neck, and kissed her heartily. In short, we were there from three to six o'clock, and the emperor himself came out of the next room and made me go in there to hear the infanta play the violin. On the 15th, the empress sent us by the privy paymaster, who drove up to our house in Gala, two dresses, one for the boy and one for the girl. As soon as the command arrives, they are to appear at court, and the privy paymaster will fetch them. Today, at half past two in the afternoon, they are to go to the youngest archdukes, and at four o'clock to the Hungarian chancellor, Count Palfi. Yesterday, we were with Count Kaunitz, and the day before with Countess Kinski, and later with Count Ulefeld, and we already have more engagements for the next two days. Please tell everybody that, thank God, we are all well and happy. I send greetings and am your old friend, Mozart. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg. Vienna, October 19th, 1762. You will have received my letter by the last post. This morning I was summoned to the privy paymaster, who received me with the greatest courtesy. His Majesty, the Emperor, wanted to know whether I could not remain in Vienna a little longer, and to this I replied that I was absolutely at His Majesty's disposal. The paymaster then paid me a hundred ducats, adding that His Majesty would soon summon us again. From whatever point of view I consider it, I foresee that we shall hardly be home before Advent. But before then, I shall send in my request for an extension of leave of absence. For even if I were able to leave here in two or three weeks, I must travel slowly on account of my children so that they may rest now and then for a few days and not fall ill. I have put the emperor's hundred ducats, as well as another twenty ducats, to your account with Herr Peiser. If I can obtain a good carriage at a decent price, I have decided to purchase one in order to give the children greater comfort. Today we were at the French ambassador's. Tomorrow we are invited to Count Harak from four to six, but which Count Harak he is I do not know. I shall see where the carriage takes us to, for on every occasion we are fetched by a servant in the nobleman's carriage and are brought home again. From six or half past six to nine we are to perform for six ducats at a big concert which a certain rich nobleman is giving and at which the greatest virtuosi now in Vienna are going to perform. The nobles send us their invitations 
four, five, six to eight days in advance in order not to miss us. For instance, the chief postmaster, Count Power, has already engaged us for the next Monday. Wolfgang now gets enough driving, as he goes out at least twice a day. Once we drove out at half past two to a place where we stayed until a quarter to four. Count Hardegg then fetched us in his carriage, and we drove in full gallop to a lady, at whose house we remained till half past five. Thence Count Connets sent to fetch us, and we stayed with him until about nine. I can hardly write, for both pen and ink are wretched, and I must steal time to do so. I have absolutely no news to give you, as here they talk as little about the war as if there were no war. I have never in my life heard so little news or known as little as I have during these four or five weeks since I left Salzburg. I should like to hear some news from you. I hope at least that you will have something to tell me. Has His Grace returned home already? I hope that he is well. Is His Excellently Count Speyer in Salzburg? He must be, I think. I wrote to him from Linz. How is our worthy Father Confessor? When you can do so, please give him my most obedient greetings. I hope that your wife and all your dear ones are in excellent health. I send her my greetings. Do you know whom our Estlinger came across? The innkeeper at Helbrun. He had a, a long talk with him. But more important still, do you know where I am living? In the Herbergasse, not far from the Hohenbruck, on the first floor of the carpenter's house. The room is a thousand feet long and one foot wide. <laughs> you laugh, but it is no laughing matter for us when we tread on one another's corns. Still, less it is a laughing matter when my boy throws me and the girl throws my wife out our wretched beds or when they dig us in our ribs as they do every night. Each of our beds is, I reckon, four and a half feet wide, and this amazingly palatial dwelling is divided by a partition into two parts for each of these large beds. But let us be patient. We are in Vienna. My wife would like to have her lined fur, but we think it would cost too much to send it by the mail coach, and it might get spoiled in transit. It is in the chest in the little room, but as I intend to have a new one made for her in Salzburg for the days of the festival, it would do better to buy something for her here, where there is plenty of choice. Would you like to know what Wolfgang's costume is like? It is of the finest cloth, lilac in color. The waistcoat is of moire, but of the same shade as the coat and both coat and waistcoat are trimmed in wide double gold braiding. It was made for the Archduke Maximilian. An earl's dress was the court dress of an archduchess, and is of white brochet taffeta, with all kinds of trimmings. It is a pity that we shall only be able to make a petticoat out of it, but it has a little bodice too. My paper is at an end, and there is no more time. Give my greetings to everyone in Salzburg. Leopold Mozart to Lorenz Hagenauer, Salzburg. Vienna, October 30th, 1762. I was beginning to think that for 14 days in succession we were far too happy. God has sent us a small cross, and we must thank his infinite goodness that things have turned out as they have. At seven o'clock in the evening of the 21st, we again went to the Empress. Our Wolfgang, however, was not quite as well as usual, and before we drove there, and also as he was going to bed, he complained a good deal of his backside and his hips. When he got into bed, I examined the places where he said he had pain and found a few spots as large as a Krautzer, very red and slightly raised, 
and painful to the touch, but they were only on his shins, on both elbows, and a few on his posterior. Altogether, there were very few. He was feverish, and we gave him a black powder and a margrave powder, but he had a rather restless night. On Friday, we repeated the powders both morning and evening, and we found that the spots had spread, but although they were large, they had not increased in number. We had to send messages to all the nobles where we had engagements for the next eight days and refused for one day after another. We continued to give Margrave powders, and on Sunday Wolfgang began to perspire, as we wanted him to, for hitherto his fever had been more or less dry. I met the physician of Countess von Zinzendorf, who happened to be away from Vienna, and gave him particulars. He at once came back with me and approved of what we had done. He said it was a kind of scarlet fever rash. Thank God he is now so well that we hope that if not tomorrow, his name day, at least on the day after tomorrow, he will get up for the first time. Also, he has just cut a back tooth, which has made his left cheek swell. The nobles not only inquire most graciously every day about the condition of our boy, but talked about him a great deal to our physician, so that Dr. Bernard, that is his name, could hardly be more attentive than he is. Meanwhile, this affair has cost me fifty ducats at least, but I am infinitely grateful to God that it has turned out so well. These scarlet fever spots, which are a fashionable complaint for children in Vienna, are dangerous, and I hope that Wolfgang has now become acclimatized, for the change of air was the main cause of the trouble. Please give my most obedient respects to your wife, and tell her that I must worry her again, and ask her to be so kind as to arrange for three masses to be read in Loretto at the Holy Child, and three masses in Burgle at St. Francesco di Paola. I shall repay everything with thanks. I beg you to use every effort to ascertain what His Grace will do eventually, and what hopes I may entertain of the post of Vice Kapellmeister. I know I am not asking in vain, since you are my friend. Who knows what I may do? If only I knew what the future will finally bring. For one thing is certain. I am now in circumstances which allow me to earn my living in Vienna also. However, I still prefer Salzburg to all other advantages. But I must not be kept back. Once more I beg you. For otherwise I may let others persuade me to do I myself know not what.